Hey y'all, this week's episode of The Read is brought to you by Royal Oils. One of the most desired hair goals for a lot of us is to grow healthy hair, but in order to do that, you've got to start with a healthy scalp, and that's where the Royal Oils collection comes in. It works to promote a healthier scalp and healthier hair in just three weeks. The line makes it easy to keep your scalp moisturized and healthy. I love Royal Oils, and we've teamed up with them for some special content coming later on in the show, so stick around to hear some tips from celebrity hairstylist and natural hair care expert Kaya Wright about how you can keep your hair looking great while we're all at home and check out the collection at walmart.com and walmart stores all right let's move on this episode is also being brought to you guys by barefoot hard seltzer it's a vibrant and refreshing hard seltzer made with real wine perfect for a summer in your backyard or in your bathroom or in your kitchen or anywhere else in your personal space you can find barefoot hard seltzer at your local retailer or you can get it delivered to your door from drizzly.com search barefoot hard seltzer and use the promo code barefoot hard seltzer all one word for five dollars off of your first order barefoot hard seltzer is your summer dream in a can go get some and and let's start the show. Oh, happy day. Okay, all right, and welcome back, niggas and friends, to another episode of the podcast. I am uh, Amber Patrice Riley. And I am Elijah McLean. Welcome back to The Read. Yes, here we are in another episode of this program. Mm -hmm. Um, Still quarantined. I hear rumors that the, uh, the streets are getting ready to open back up, which is interesting to me because I haven't heard any rumors of, you know, any... Mm -hmm of these numbers in terms of the virus getting better or finding a way to make it get better, but money. So good luck with everybody having fun out here on the streets and stuff. I guess you can go get your nails done. Maybe possibly look into it, but (laughs) so black excellence this week goes to Elizabeth Montague. She is a 24 year old illustrator, cartoonist, badass and the first black woman to have her illustrations contributed to the new yorker magazine um she yes is breaking records and numbers and barriers and things like that for her representation's sake as far as cartoonists go but she's also a badass and knows what she's doing and takes what she does very seriously especially as far as um black representation in the in the field goes um, I believe her first cartoon uh, just pictured two black women standing on a rooftop with a Batman-esque uh, skylight mm, in the air okay. that beamed. Uh, the sign says, per my last email, <laughs> written in the sky. <laughs> and it's captioned, we've done all we can. Yes, it's out of our hands the realness. now. Amen. <laughs> I also really loved one that she did recently featuring two black women getting ready to... Uh, Uh, Getting ready for the protest, making signs and pins and stuff. And the phone is buzzing on the desk in front of them. And it's captioned, just ignore it. My white friends keep checking in on me because they think racism is new. Uh So, (laughs) and this is on NewYorker.com. So, shout out to Liz, Liz at large, and everything that they're doing in terms of um, keeping color in the realm of cartooning and also being hilarious at it and just yeah yeah I've heard that's an issue for those of you with white friends I haven't had to experience that but apparently they cannot stop blowing y'all's phones up right now god bless and you know what sure whatever whatever y'all need to do whatever you can handle Mm -hmm. see (laughs) Thank you for being our Black Excellence this week. And now let's move into some pop culture. Um, This is a segment called Hot Tops, the Texas Chain Raw Massacre. And speaking of... No, you did not. (laughs) White (laughs) nonsense. Gross. What is it? Nonsense person? Anyway, I'm just going to start off with white people. Um, Taylor Swift. Mm. Mm. 
So Taylor and I have a history she doesn't know about. Yeah. And, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um, you know, it's been up and down. That's a lie. It's been down. But today what I have to talk about is not her winning awards that Michael Jackson should have won or, you know, just saying something entirely pointless or arguing with um Psalm West's mama. Instead, I will discuss her latest take on Juneteenth. Taylor Swift posted a clip featuring Danielle Young uh, on, via The Root. And it was basically all about the, about the Juneteenth holiday. Wow. Free damn, free damn day. And uh, why it should be a national holiday, etc. Okay. Taylor reposted the video on Instagram and says, Happy Juneteenth. Okay. <laughs> Let me just get... Because happy Juneteenth being the first thing. Is right. <laughs> but okay. I want to thank The Root and Daniel Young for allowing me to post this video about the significance of today, June 19th, and why it should be celebrated as a national holiday. Personally, I've made the decision to give all my employees June 19th off in honor of Freedom Day from now on and to continue to educate myself on the history that brought us to this present moment. I'd like to pull over for a second. Editors know. Okay. So... I read this, right? And my initial question was, how many black people does does Taylor Swift yes. even have on staff? Because yes. I don't even know that she knows black people aside from Todrick. So, yeah. like, giving all your employees the day off seems to be a nice je- gesture or whatever. But if you just send in a whole bunch of white people off on paper, right. I don't see... I- but okay, she continues... Okay, that's a valid question. <laughs> For my family, everything that has transpired recently gives us an opportunity to reflect, listen, and reprogram any part of our lives that hasn't been loudly and ferociously anti-racist mm. and to never let privilege lie dormant when it could be used to stand up for what's right. Ooh, wow. And then it says here um, in all caps, Harambe, Harambe, no, it does not say Harambe. Harambe. I know it don't. Please stop fucking with me. <laughs> it just made me think of that episode of the Boondocks where the <laughs> the history teacher was trying to teach the class about Kwanzaa and he was chanting <laughs> at the end, Harambe! Harambe! And everybody was like, what the fuck is this thing talking about? <laughs> okay. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, you know, Taylor, I'll take yeah. it. I will take this until I see horns. And and I'm gonna just mind my business. You know, I prefer this over, you know, whatever the Kanye West narrative was or whatever random pop song about Katy Perry or whoever else you don't like. Um I don't see anything here that is untrue. Right. So fine. There is that. Um, I have to give it to Taylor yeah. Swift, like she has been saying the right things. You actually could have never convinced me five to 10 years ago that I would be agreeing with Taylor Swift and wishing Kanye West would go to fuck away and like never be seen again. I would have never seen the same this thing. coming. Yeah. It's amazing to me that I have had to agree with Taylor Swift and disagree with Trina within weeks of each yeah, other. Yeah, that's not right. Is literally that's not right. The beginning of hell. Mm-hmm. Um Correct. <laughs> And I just feel like at this point, there's no turning back. We're damned, and it is what it is. Yeah. Um, Every day is a century in this year. Like, everything is fucking crazy. It's all upside down. And here we are agreeing with Taylor Swift. She said this. She said, you know, she spoke out about y'all's favorite racist statues. She told the president. She also said she dragged Trump again. (laughs) Like, she's she's been saying the right things. I I gotta give it to her for that. I don't know when Olivia Pope walked into Taylor Swift's uh, boardroom meetings, but honey, fine. I'll take it until I can. Yeah. You know? I think it was Trump getting elected that woke her up, but whatever it was, good for you and keep going. But that <laughs> happened a while ago and he's been president for years. <laughs> and this is recent, but sure, <laughs> fine. Whatever's going on. Right. Mm-hmm. Take what we can get. <laughs> Speaking of Juneteenth, um, Beyonce gave us a little surprise gift. Amen. 
on June 19th in the form of a new song called Black Parade. She dropped it off. I've been um oddly fortunate to just like be by my phone when Tidal sends these notifications mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, just dropped off some new Beyonce in case you're you're curious. Because I literally saw the song or the notification the moment that it came up and it was like listen to the new song black ray whatever beyonce and i said oh excuse me i'm sorry what <laughs> thank you it's 11 i don't know why beyonce likes leak songs mm. at like 11 30 i'd be ready for bed like, <laughs> and here she go <laughs> it's almost as if she's saying well these children are keeping me up so bitch get your ass up to <laughs> I don't yeah. care about your friends. Right. She really don't because she continues to do this. But I stayed my ass up to listen. Of course, I had to. I'm just, I'd like to say that I'm incredibly grateful that this is like an upbeat black bop. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know about the rest of these rap niggas and their current Black Lives Matter movement records, but if I got to swing low on one more sweet chariot, I'm signing the fuck out. I can't do no more you rap niggas current event conscious <laughs> rap songs. I'm not interested in any of it. And so to just be able to be placed in a, a situation, a moment, an energy where... I can see myself like inappropriately gyrating on a picnic bench yes. while dressing a hot dog. And in the you summer. deserve, yes. I thank you for that, Beyonce. As well as again showcasing what Jay Z has spoken about of, you know, like she she's a rapper. This is this song is essentially melodic rapping, as she's done <laughs> numerous times throughout her career, and none of you hoes can keep up. So Yeah, I mean, as soon as I heard I'm going back down to the South where my roots ain't watered down, I was like, oh, okay, turn this the fuck up. Like you said, it was something that is actually like upbeat and positive about being black. And even the fact that she explicitly says, you know. Maybe it's just the blackness and and that's just why y'all are mad. And it's just the way that you see how we are and how fucking popping it is over here. And you're just pissed about it. And you always will be. And she's dropping a lot of stuff about Oshun and Anx and and getting niggas to go, you know, research that sort of stuff, which I think is great. So, you know, I... mm. I don't know. It was just like, I felt like Juneteenth was so emotional this year, especially... That for Beyonce mm. to put that out was just like, okay, like, yeah. I just need a little bit of a bomb because everything is really fucking raw and shitty right now. And that's what she gave us. Yes. And I really like, I'm telling you niggas, I was prepared for just a somber, singing ass, somber, like, black moment. And I was like, you know what? If anybody's going to mm-hmm. give me that on a record right now, I'll go ahead and I'll take it for my queen. And I was like, fine. You know, Beyonce, go ahead and get me emotional, whatever it is. I'll let you have it. I'd much rather it be you than YBN, you know, oh, no. TRSQ, LMNOP. You know, and it is what it is. And surprisingly, that bass kicked in and I was like, oh, you knew <laughs> what I needed. Thank Blue Ivy for her creative direction as well as Rumi and Sir for their, you know, songwriting abilities because <laughs> honestly, this just, it was the energy that we needed as well as like, you know, the black, the authentic blackness that one would expect for the time. Right. So I cherish it. Yeah, it could have easily been like Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Go Down, Moses Ass music and... It just felt good. So thank you, Beyonce, because you didn't have to do that. (laughs) Yeah, very, very true. You know, I'm incredibly tired of waiting in this water. You know, I want to be a little dry. Just I really like the whole (laughs) everything is driving me crazy. I'm just worn out every day. I'm not even the movement for me. Like, I mean, obviously the movement, not the movement, but like the events that that, you know, require the movement (laughs) are exhausting. Yes. But I'm speaking specifically about all of your rap cousins that, you know, talk about swiping a Benjamin Franklin through the Uh butt cheeks of some woman they don't respect, (laughs) like, at any time, which, 
Again, I bump. I, I'm not going to act like I don't bop to that in in a club when it comes mm-hmm. on. However, at the same time, I don't want your Black Lives Matter edition of you know mm. flossing whatever TikTok the songs. So say that shit. <laughs> that's just how I feel. But who am I? But nobody. I mean, well, um, rap niggas have been arguing about that very thing, so you know it's timely. Speaking of. Uh, J. Cole, Jermaine Cole, rapper from North Carolina, I believe. He released a song recently called um, Snow on the Bluff, <laughs> named after a dramatic fake nigga movie. Yep. <laughs> so... I didn't listen to this song when I saw it on Apple Music initially because two things. A, everything I just said about um, current conscious nigger rap. And <laughs> B, because I stepped off of the Jermaine Cole bus back when he started his sophomore album with 13 consecutive fans. Yep. The niggas opened his second album. I remember. I'm pretty sure it was like the second Like, faggot, 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 faggot on the end of like 12 bars. Man. And then came forward with some shit talking about, oh, well, I feel like we, we needed to have the conversation or some shit. Like, who are you, RuPaul? Who gave you? <laughs> right. You're not the, you're not the leader of the conversation, my nigga. <laughs> In no ways. Yeah. I remember that. That pissed us both off. So. So I saw this. It went in one eye and out the other. Um, but apparently, it was a bit more controversial than I would have expected because this song, while I expected it just to be, you know, directed at the man and all of his um, sadistic behavior, this was more so about. It was kind of like black male insecurity. The song. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly what this was. <laughs> it was, and, and I don't even really mean that from like a shady or condescending point because I almost feel like that's its intent. But it, it was like, it was like driving in that direction and then intentionally like veered off of the road on a hard left and drove through a cornfield and then like hit a tree. So okay. <laughs> essentially, the song is kind of like, Discussing his sort of like feeling of inadequacy as a, like a leader in this movement for change as a black man who is considered to be, you know, woke to a certain degree and how he feels like, you know, because he doesn't do as much reading as such and such person or whatever, whatever he feels. And and all again, all of this would be fine and fair. There's loads of people, specifically black people who feel like maybe they aren't doing enough or they could be doing more and maybe don't know where to begin or how to like harness that responsibility the right way, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of space for a conversation about that. Unfortunately, (laughs) Jermaine decided to, to, to dedicate like two thirds of the damn song yes. to a woman on, on social media that we've all surmised to be no name. And he's all but confirmed mm-hmm. and no name being a rapper from Chicago, a very sickening and also irrelevant, but she's like super pretty. Anyway, no name um, is like clavicle deep in getting the job done. <laughs> um, is. And so this song is like basically talking about if not her, women like her and like how their tone or how they come off, I guess, can make other people small and how like <sighs> it basically just goes over like how this nigga basically feels inadequate and and feels like a way that this black woman has like the confidence as well as the education to back up what the fuck she's talking about. And I guess he feels inferior because of it and decided to like dedicate a song to it. So like most people who listen to the song, whether they knew who he was talking about or not, were like, nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) You could have kept this in a diary or something. Group chat, the real friend app, (laughs) anything. Exactly. So... 
Um, I know that No Name heard the song in Sweeted Queen Tone and <laughs> other fans and celebrities, including like Chica, Chance the Rapper, came forward and were also kind of echoing the sentiment of what the fuck is this nigga talking about? Mm-hmm. J. Cole said, some assume to know who the song is about. That's fine with me. It's not my job to tell anybody what to think or feel about the work. I accept all conversation and criticisms, but follow at no name i love and honor her as a leader in these times she has done and is doing the reading and the listening and the learning on the path that she truly believes is the correct one for our people meanwhile a nigga like me just be rapping i haven't done a lot of reading and i don't (laughs) i'm sorry no you're right i don't feel well equipped as a leader in these times but i do a lot of thinking and i appreciate her and others like her because they challenge my beliefs. Ooh. And I feel that in these times, that's important. Okay. I'm sorry. That part is just funny every time. Where he's just like, yeah, I don't know. No, it is. Because J. Cole fans have been telling us for years that you have to be a certain level of intelligent and woke to feel where this nigga's coming from. And he just straight up said, I don't be reading like mm. that. <laughs> so it's just, it just takes me right on down every time I hear it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if anybody makes you... I know that J. Cole has always approached his... Maybe not always, but for a good portion, if not the majority of his career, has approached uh, rapping on more of a like traditional hip-hop. I'm about bars and substance and painting a picture with my lyricism or whatever thing. And so maybe for that reason, as well as the fact that he really do be at a lot of these protests, not saying much, but he'll just be pictured walking with everybody at these protests. I guess that allows people to or has allowed people to assume that he is like somebody's Malcolm X or somebody. I don't know. (laughs) Right. So, again, I totally understand this you know, perspective of being like, well, I feel a responsibility to speak up or do something or do more or whatever. And I don't really know where to go with that. I just don't understand how we direct that energy to a black woman and be like, well, let's, you know, let's discuss the way that you can adjust your tone. And may I give you some more (laughs) advice on your delivery so trash niggas don't feel so bad and so inadequate about you being sickening and really knowing what the fuck you're talking about. And it was kind of like, huh? Like, Like what are we doing here? You mad at her tone, but first of all, that's an argument men always use to get women to shut up or to exactly. pretend like what or they have right or to pretend like what we have to say doesn't matter or isn't worth listening to. But also, no name was not born in some magical, progressive, woke ass environment where she just never said anything wrong, never had no fucked up points of view or nothing. Like just a few months ago or last year, whenever it was where she was like talking about capitalism and niggas being able to have this and buy this and own this and niggas like called her out on it and she has been doing the reading. That's where her book club club came from. Like she literally took the criticism that she received, did the reading herself And formed her own opinions, paved her own way from there, and is sharing what she has learned with niggas. So it's like, you're really mad at this woman and tone policing her right now when she did what you should be doing. You should be taking some fucking notes, listening to the goddamn criticism, read some fucking books, and then share your knowledge, nigga. It was just like, you completely missing the point here. And like... I feel like, again, that's like uh, like, uh, most of the people, like a number of the people that I follow or witness that have that or or take that sort of role or responsibility, uh, like a no name or Kendrick Sampson or somebody like those people educated them. They they did exactly what you're talking about. They know what the fuck they're talking about and have that confidence because they did the work themselves and they have 24 hours in a day just like anybody else. You know what I mean? So it's like. I totally understand feeling like, damn, I don't know if I do enough or if I know enough or whatever the fuck, because I be feeling the same way too. But I'm not going to be like, well, damn, well, you ain't got to be so smart. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? I went and explain it to me like I'm five, but you a grown ass If man. you could just be gentle. You a grown like, ass exactly. 
Man, these be the same niggas talking about how they natural leaders or they alpha individuals or they the head of the household or whatever the fuck else and can't even take the responsibility for themselves and read a fucking book and learn something. This definitely could have been something in your journal that was backed by the Moesha soundtrack <laughs> where you just wrote it and you got out your feelings and was like, you know, man, I have these these feelings deep within me. But then again, you know what? I guess I'm also not mad at being wholly honest and, and, and expressing yourself how the fuck you are in that moment on a song. But like this is <laughs> just yeah, like no. so tone deaf and the delivery was just like. What are you talking? What What are we doing here? What exactly is the message? And then I know that No Name like released a song that was literally a minute and maybe nine seconds long. That was a response to mm-hmm. it, and it was, you know, lyrically it was as artful as a talented rapper a talented rapper song would be or whatever but it was essentially what one would sense would think it would say which is like (laughs) of all of the shit that's going on (laughs) yes (laughs) of all of the stuff that we're out here fighting for trans lives george floyd brianna taylor all of these people you making a song about me my nigga (laughs) like You're making a record about me and what I'm talking about. Like, are you even looking at the news? Because how can I be the the main thing on your mind? How can I possibly be? And she later apologized for it also. was like, you know, I didn't have to respond. My ego got the best of me. I'm sorry if this, you know, distracted from Mm -hmm. the cause of the movement or whatever. And it was like, no, girl, you know, pull over. (laughs) Take your right, sidebar. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Stop for gas and a snack and get what you got yeah. off your chest as well. That's fine. We'll give yeah, you a moment to do that. Exactly. I actually hated that she felt the need to apologize because black women are always yeah. being, I don't want to say manipulated, but it just happens time and time again that black women are made to feel like they're wrong for sticking up for themselves or defending yeah. themselves. Like she wouldn't have to release no fucking track. She shouldn't have had to have nothing to say. Jermaine brought her ass into this. So like, but whatever, she made her points. She's still reading, learning and educating others. And he can still try to do the goddamn same. <sighs> What else is going on? Um, Lil Nas X is cop to being a barb in real life. Oh my God, I saw that. (laughs) I remember when I was talking about this and being like, that boy is definitely a barb, but. I mean, because it was like not even. It was not a secret. A huge secret. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, Lil Nas X uh, sent a message to Nicki Minaj via Twitter, I believe, where he mentioned having a song that he really wanted to collaborate with her on. Um, And I believe when some fan asked why he never admitted to being the Barb account Nas Mirage, he said, I didn't want people to know I was gay, to be honest. Um, He also added, when someone asked him, or, okay, someone said, to him that being a barb doesn't automatically make you gay he said it doesn't or it don't but people will ask people will assume if you had an entire fan page dedicated to nikki you're gay and the rap (laughs) slash music industry ain't exactly built or accepting of gay men yet um i mean he has a solid point there he does Many people damn sure knew that that was his barb account, and they damn sure assumed he was gay because of it. So it's not like he's he's incorrect. Because right? Of I it. mean, and they weren't um, wrong. Like he was gay with a whole ass Nikki fan page. It was nothing wrong with that. It was something wrong with the yeah. fact that niggas was gonna be shitty to him because of it. Exactly. Um. Nikki responded to him saying it was a bit of a sting when you denied being a bar, but I understand. I can see that. Congratulations <laughs> on building up your confidence to speak your truth at Lil Nas X. I can see that shit too, especially since she, like everybody else, knew that the nigga was dead right. in the bar. And that was in the midst of a time where she was, you know, absolutely certain that there was this bandwagon hate train thing going on with her. So it was probably like yet another yeah, celeb, probably. a black celeb on top of that, acting like they don't know who I am or don't like me or whatever so i could see that um well kudos yeah, good for them, to them if they are gonna work together but i can't get over her and this shit she's doing with that white boy with the technicolor hair so 
<laughs> I would just have to leave that at the altar right where it's at. I thought to myself, if she will do not one, but two songs with that child. You cannot tell me those are two different songs. Little, you really brush. can't. You cannot tell me that. It's the exact same looks and everything. How? They charging you two different <laughs> dollar amounts for it on iTunes. I bet they so are. Uh, I don't find them to be no um, drastically different from one another. However, it's what they chose. Mm, and, well, all right. you know, I am absolutely sure that Lace 9 has no problem with its um, alleged successes. Because it has loads of numbers underneath its video. So I guess. <laughs> But yeah, we'll see if um, Onika gives Lil Nas X a feature here or there. She gives him to plenty of others. So, you know, uh, out of the ashes, a barb shall rise. And I'd like to see this come together as something creative and fun in the future. As Lil Nas X later tweeted, life is too short to pretend you're not a barb. (laughs) So... I mean, because if you are a barb in your heart, you need to let it out. You do. You need to let that barb shine. Yeah. <laughs> There's no room in any human heart for that kind of energy. Just let it expand yeah. and go wherever it may. But good for him. Yes. For coming out. Oh, he's only 21. This nigga was born in 1999. Oh, yeah. He's a whole Gen Z. He's a little baby. My word. <laughs> He's a little baby. Yeah. He is a child. Really is. Adorable little small thing. <laughs> Not his barb account was suspended by Twitter due to violating spam policies. I bet. Let me tell you something. I bet. The doll was not only a barb, she was a hard working okay. card stamped bar. <laughs> Let me tell you how many times I tweeted starships were meant to fly. <laughs> This nigga was spamming every single celebrity with whatever link was available to Nikki's new single. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> like, not Lil Nas X was tweeting at Demi Lovato. <laughs> yes. Buy pills and potions. <laughs> Stream starships. Stream anaconda well, anyway. Enough. Thanks. <laughs> I can right. see it. I can see it. <laughs> That is absolutely delicious. Yeah, he's just a small baby. Good for him. Congratulations to you for getting um, redeemed in the eye of your son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jesus. I genuinely hope they do a song together. I yeah, mean, I'd put it on his new album. I think it would be cute. That would be nice. Yeah. And again, like I said, if you will do one for uh, My Little Pony. Nope. All right. I don't see the issue. Okay. Swiss Beats has apologized to OVO after calling Drake a pussy boy on Instagram Live. What? That is absolutely right. Yep. I said the same thing when I read this this pussy morning. Pussy boy. <laughs> yes. It was more, it was said more of, in more of a Jamaican. Uh, I'll get to okay. that. Okay. So Swiss Beats was on Instagram Live with Busta Rhymes friend and confidant and if you threw a party all right and okay nope. so he was talking to bus rhymes on instagram and the conversation went towards a song that leaks uh featuring drake and buster rhymes on a jay dilla produced beat so they're having a conversation about this Busta Rhymes basically explained that this leaked song uh, came at a time where Drake was looking to do a song on a Jay Dilla beat. Jay Dilla, famous, critically acclaimed producer from Detroit. Mm -hmm. So obviously the girls, you know... They cherish and respect his legacy. It only makes sense to me anyway that Drake would be like, I need some of that Jay Dilla heat. And apparently he knew that Busta Rhymes had access or had some Jay Dilla songs in his uh, stash somewhere. So he reached out to Busta to get access to it, which I guess led to some sort of a, a collaboration. Busta says to Swiss that he 
actually uh, respected Drake as an MC or whatever and wanted to work with him. And so I guess that's why he decided to like make this a collaborate thing or whatnot. But the song never came out. And he claims that he never really got a chance to talk to Drake about why the song never came out. Let me tell you. Okay, I will just stop and say okay. that I did like extensive research on this story because I could <laughs> not get it. Like I, I tried so hard to understand how this landed at Swiss Beats calling Drake pussy, and it just made I, I couldn't. But what I'm, what I'm, what I am uh, assuming this is about, based on all of the stuff I read from numerous websites, I was reminded back in the day, Buster Rhymes was actually part of Young Money because you'll remember. Back when Young Money was like initially a thing, and Drake and Drake and, and Nicki mm-hmm. were like their their Michelle and Barack, yeah. <laughs> and they were signing every like they were signing everybody. I feel like they signed Fred Durst. They find they signed Lloyd. Like they signed everybody. Omarion. Everybody was on Young Money. So I guess back then, maybe which was like maybe a decade or and some change ago, years ago. When is when like this collaboration may have taken place? It never came out. There was never any discussion of it. Now it's sort of implied that perhaps Drake never wanted to do a Busta Rhymes collaboration. He just wanted a Jay Dilla beat from Busta Rhymes, <laughs> okay. and perhaps that is why they never did anything with the song. Okay. And they are assuming, or at least Swiss Beats is assuming, that there's a possibility that the song was leaked from Drake's camp. Therefore, nobody, mainly Buster Rhymes, <laughs> could profit from said song, which is upsetting to Swizz and his homegirl, because <laughs> damn, if they can't release a Jay Dilla beat, <laughs> what the hell can they release? So, oh, friend, this led into because I'm pretty sure Swiss Beats is at least of Jamaican descent. His name is literally Kasim Dean, which is one of the most Jamaican ass mm-hmm. motherfucking names I've ever heard. And I know Busta Rhymes is also Jamaican or of descent. So that led into. Uh, Swizz Beats randomly yelling out that Drake is a pussy boy and then starting the song. So, like, that accent kind of okay. <laughs> helped me understand. Because initially I read, like, a caption on Complex or Wrap Up or one of these websites that was like, Swizz Beats calls Drake a pussy boy. And I was like, who the fuck says right. that? But then when I heard how he said it, I was like, oh, Jamaicans. So, <laughs> your people. All right. <laughs> He called him pussy not once but twice. Buster Rhymes' face during the entire exchange was the highlight for me. He looked genuinely gobsmacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? You see that shit coming? <laughs> like, like, he didn't really pull up for drama. He just... It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> he just agreed to be on Instagram. He was like, "What? this is what you're really doing, Alicia's sp- uh, husband? Okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, my nigga, because I did right. not ask for all this. <laughs> um, Swizz Beats later apologized, blamed it on the alcohol. He did have a oh, drink Lord. in his hand, I believe, oh, on the Instagram. Um, and... Um, Niggas. Drake's friend uh, and confidant uh, Chubbs of Ovio. <laughs> and- okay. I literally Googled Ovio crew, which led me to an article on the fader that was titled something like a guide to all of Drake's f- uh, crew members or something like that. And it went through a list of all of them oh on God. some like godfather ass shit with the like lieutenant and the cop the capo or what it was okay anyways so this nigga chubbs who they just described as the muscle i don't know if he's like security or if he's just one of drake's friends that will fight you okay that's what it sounds but anyways he put on instagram uh tagging swiss beats we don't need no apology it's clear you don't like us, so act the same way when you see us, pussy. I don't know if it's like... Okay. 
I don't know if it's the pandemic, the coronavirus, the white people, the president, or just other miscellaneous bullshit going on in my life right now. But, oh, this is so dumb. Yep. This is so dumb. <laughs> this is just so stupid. <laughs> and to me, it proves that the real friend at whenever it happens... Yeah should probably have like what I would call like a a pull the plug premium account. Okay. Where one of our representatives basically would have access to your social media and will be monitoring you when you go live. So in moments <laughs> like this, yes god. <laughs> they can just shut your shit the fuck down when shit gets too spicy. Yes, the moment you step And you will get <laughs> An immediate notification (laughs) that says, girl, you knew better. We don't have nothing else to say to you. I don't know how to make this This is a million dollar idea. It absolutely has to. (laughs) Because I absolutely believe the Swiss Beats had a bit to drink, bored in coronavirus. These kids, you know, probably drew on his wall in in Crayola. And he was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about the internet today. (laughs) And got sober and was like, guess I called Drake a pussy. What do I do about this? So, I don't know. Niggas. I mean, yeah, that's probably exactly what happened. And it still blows my mind that niggas will call something pussy as an insult, but also literally shoot each other in the face behind pussy. Like, I still don't get I just still don't get that, but yeah, these niggas is bored and quarantine is, it's taking a lot of people's uh, rational thinking skills away. It is. Niggas are making bad decisions here lately. Shout out to everybody. All of the above. Speaking of um, versus black on black issues. Oh Lord, did you watch it? <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, Alicia versus John Legend. Oh, no, I didn't watch oh, that. Oh, that was, it was funny. <laughs> I forget about them all of the time, and then I'm reminded of, that they happened, like, right after it finished. Yeah. So, I was entertained, though. I had a good time. I'd imagine it would have been cute. Lots of piano. Yeah, lots of piano. Some Some people came to lip sync, and some people came to not. But overall, it was a good time. <laughs> I don't need for that to be expanded on. <laughs> I, I don't even want to know. I truly don't. I'm going to just leave that where I found it. Okay. So, um, last but not least in our hot tops this week, apparently the beef is back on and it's, it's broiling hot between... Uh, K. Michelle and Tamar. What? Of all the names you could have said just now. <laughs> this loop-de-loop of a fucking few. Just pick one. Hate each other or I don't. thought they came to like a truce or something. I, that must be over. Three, four times. <laughs> Damn it. So Tamar was on... Um, T.S. Madison's show. Hey, T.S. Madison. And they were discussing, I think, the verses, battles, and stuff like that. And Maddie asked her if she would do a verses. Tamar asked with who? And Madison said, well, with K. Michelle. And Tamar responded not with words, but by ringing a little bell that she had in front of her. I guess maybe that was to represent reclaiming her time. I don't really okay. know what... Um, I think the bell was something that she used as a way to say, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, um, perhaps. <laughs> but um, it was hilarious and moving on to, I guess, someone bringing it up the next time K. Michelle was on Instagram Live, to which she... Um, Talks about being in a positive place and uh, not giving a fuck about oh, holier than thou people who throw shade and um, talk shit and have affairs with married men. She then <laughs> called the person um, a cartoon, a muppet, and um, and said that this person Tamar. Mm-hmm. Um, 
slept with Jermaine Dupri's father and got dragged out of an elevator by Jermaine Dupri's mama. What? Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know where to place this. Right. Because <laughs> like, now you're getting into it. <laughs> Jermaine Dupree's parents made an appearance in this story. Jermaine Dupree's parents. (laughs) That is just so fucking random. What? (laughs) Like, are we in a Twilight Zone? Did the world slip into the upside down in some place so we didn't fucking notice? What the fuck is going on? Anyway, didn't end there because the conversation was brought up on Ricky Smiley's morning show. Oh my God, niggas. Where the brat confirmed that um, Tamar actually did get into a scuffle on an elevator, but not with Jermaine Dupree's mother. Rather, it was Jermaine Dupree's father's ex-wife. Oh, my God. Now, it wasn't really specified if said ex-wife was married to um, Jermaine Dupree's daddy at the time, hence the issue or whatever, but... The brat claims she was in the elevator when the fight took place and stepped oh, out shit. just in time, I guess, to not get scuffed. So <laughs> Okay, Beyonce. There you have that. <laughs> oh wow. She didn't I say mean... she didn't say whether or not um the like she knew about the actual affair, but I guess that was also implied. She sort of like stepped back when it came to giving further details. It was like, no, nah, girl, you came up to give us a piece of information or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what's the rest of it? I get why stop now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Far be it for me to fucking defend Tamar Braxton. But this is a lot for somebody who literally didn't say shit. Like she, <laughs> unless I missed something or there was more to the clip or whatever, you can film. Actually, don't film me. I don't really give a fuck. But from what I saw, nobody said anything about K. Michelle. Okay. So for her to be like, oh, well, fuck you and as well. <laughs> Um, let's discuss <laughs> the fact that you slept with yeah. Jermaine Dupree's dad. All hilarious. All funny. Just because, again, I have to... I have to imagine Tamar Braxton fucking Jermaine Dupree's daddy, who I don't even know. I don't even know what he looks, looks like. like, right? I don't... I have no I know nothing context about that, for that. Also, you don't need Please to put Jermaine Dupree's daddy Please don't. I mentioned. Please do not. I don't care about that either. <laughs> I'm just saying... Theoretically, this is fucking hilarious. Um, also, much like the Drake's was Beats thing, I'm just going down the list of priorities yes. and I don't see it. I was just about to say, this is another one that reminds me of like the dangers of quarantine and the, the side effects of niggas being indoors with no place to go snort lines in public for a very long time and and what happens just so bored. y'all are so bored and the biggest mansions with the pools and all that shit they cannot keep y'all entertained y'all simply have to keep up mess and so now here we go unless tamar was like pretending to throw up when maddie suggested k michelle there was no need for all this <laughs> again all i saw was her grab a little bell and like a glass that had some water and ice in it and jingle it around on the camera and then they moved on so again there may be more that i'm missing or whatever but that's what i saw it didn't feel like it was called for the response that was it was called for but again these two have a history of fucking not liking each other so it's not surprising that one or the other would take the opportunity to be like, oh, well, let me also tag in a I'll tag on a huge fuck you because I actually can't stand your ass. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, what are we supposed to do with this information? Right. Is, uh, is Tamar supposed to be canceled because you fuck JD daddy? Like, I don't care. Right. No, we don't care. That <laughs> we do not care about that at all. And honestly, if we're talking about hits, then I think K. Michelle probably has Tamar beat like 
if we just talking about mm. songs that have performed well commercially now if we're talking about vocals mm. and all that that's a different conversation but i think k michelle has more recognizable songs than tamar does anyway so it could kind of be like bitch don't bring your bell at me like <laughs> i've been on billboard Maybe. hold like don't talk to me crazy but still we did not need to know this about her pussy and Jermaine all right Debris, get, Daddy. yes <laughs> we did not give it like the versus conversation on I got like I would understand why neither one of them or one of them would not want to do a versus again shade or whatever but yeah I totally could see them doing a versus together you know what I'm saying because they're consistently compared not just for not liking each other but I guess just for their place in R&B music or whatever yeah. but I sincerely don't care about who is Go better off. more talented has more songs or whatever both of y'all could sing both of y'all deserve you know a, a spot or a platform to show off your singing or whatever and who fucked who or who said what about whoever I the fuck care. on instagram or whatever right. to me at this point i couldn't care her any less about so yeah Niggas. When you're more invested because you personally hate that person, I guess I get it. But like, again, like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this information besides a laugh. Right. I don't know what happened to the truce between the two of them, but I mean, fuck all that, I guess. <laughs> That's all right out the window. They turned back on that truce ages ago because who had them who, who had them on stage together at the BET Awards? It was some black woman that nobody could hate. I don't remember. Was it like Yolanda? Had, it wasn't Yolanda. <laughs> Say, about why to, would it be you? Was it Patty? Else? Who was it? I was about to say Diana Ross, but probably not. It's probably Tamar some R&B Braxton, singer. Mich- yeah, it was Patty. Okay. It had to be Patty. Well, so because, somebody that neither one of them would have yes. said no to. <laughs> exactly. It was Patty LaBelle. It was like neither one of y'all are going to look at Patty LaBelle in her face right. at her tweet at anything and be like, no, I actually hate her. Both of y'all are gonna suck right. it up and get on this motherfucking y'all stage are. and sing the song. But yeah. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> that did not last. Come long. up here and sing, bitch. And that's it. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, you girls. <laughs> they actually, it's their they are two celebrities, another two celebrities that to me are so alike, it's kind of surprising they're not friends. Yeah. Like Nene and Kenny Moore. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so crazy to me that they don't like oh, each other. Lord. But that happens. <laughs> the housewife stands Sometimes like strong. <laughs> Sometimes I don't give a fuck. Sometimes strong, similar personalities clash yeah. rather than like blend or bond right. it's like you too much alike so similar <laughs> exactly yeah. where i would think damn i would expect y'all bitches to get along you damn you're the same person but, but that would require both of y'all to have a level of self-awareness that neither mm, nini nor kenya nor tamar mm, nor k michelle mm, possess so that's important <laughs> That might be the head of the man. I really think that's it. It's a lack of self-awareness going around. Well, good luck to everyone still in quarantine and (laughs) so damn Things are getting bad. Because, my word, I I, I don't know how many of y'all are going to keep up. Um, But that's it for Hot Tops this week. Let's take a break and we'll be right back. Hey guys, this episode is being brought to you by Thread Up. Being stuck at home is a good opportunity to take inventory on your closet. I know I've been doing plenty of that. For all of those styles and pieces that you're realizing that you are missing, you can turn to Thread Up where you'll find a vast selection, low prices, and convenience. Thread Up is the world's largest online thrift store with up to 90% off of estimated retail. You can get insane deals of thrif- thrifting with the convenience of shopping online. My favorite kind of shopping and get some of your favorite brands from Nike to like, I don't know, J. Crew or whatever you're into. Plus thousands more brands all for a fraction of the price. And today you can get an extra 30% off your first order. If you go to threadup.com slash read, you get hot items in high quality condition. And some even still have the tags on them when they get delivered directly to your door. Yes, that's right. It's a great way to get your wardrobe together, especially with the seasons changing 
changing, if you don't have a lot of money to burn through all new stuff, then you can get the styles you love at a fraction of the price. You'll look and feel good with ThreadUp. And just for our listeners, we get an exclusive offer for you. You get an extra 30% off your first order when you go to ThreadUp.com slash read. That's T-H-R-E-D-U-P dot com slash R-E-A-D for 30% off your first order. ThreadUp.com slash read. Get your extra 30% off today. Terms do apply and uh, go check them out. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're back and it is time for our listener letters. Yes, it is. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may just read them aloud on the show. <clears throat> so this person, this is probably the youngest person I've ever answered a letter from. Oh, God. Her name is Leah. And she says, hi, I'm Leah, an 11 year old who is going to middle school. How the fuck? 11, listening to this podcast, I do not know. (laughs) This podcast is almost older than you are, girl. (laughs) But, okay. Oh my goodness, that's so crazy. A girl named Nia has been torturing me, getting on my nerves, and bitching on me and my friends ever since second grade. Watch your language. (laughs) In second grade, she manipulated me into being her friend, and I've gotten over that. Everything was good in fourth grade because she went to a different class. But then in fifth grade, she came to my class and a lot went down in fifth grade. (laughs) You remember fourth and fifth grade. (laughs) She was jealous because I got to be patrol captain and she kept getting mad at me because she was talking on posts, which you are not supposed to do. And I told her to stop talking, which is my job. She got me kicked off of captain and then she eventually started calling me Miss Pretty Princess. And I constantly tell her to stop. Me and my friends have decided that when the time comes right, I can cuss her the fuck out. And I'm sorry for my language. (laughs) But sadly, we are going to the same middle school and I know damn well she will call me Miss Pretty Princess and I'm not going to let her get away with it. I would like to tell you about all the other BS she pulled these four years. And by the way, she talks to adults like she talks to me. So I need a way to shut her the fuck up. (laughs) Please. Please help me. I only need a method to stop this bitch from messing with me. Thanks. Oh, my God. (laughs) Sincerely, Leah. (laughs) P.S. Based off the attitude you put in your podcast, you seem like the best help I can get. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So, when this show started, you were what? Four? Right. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. That was this right is, before the drama started with Nia. <laughs> this is ridiculously <laughs> adorable. Um, it is. This is. I wish I had had a podcast I could write to about my friends in the fifth grade. <laughs> Woo. So, what's her name? Nia? Leah is having problems with Nia. Nia's making fun of her. Yeah, no, the Nia is the one I'm talking about. Yeah, Nia is the one that's calling Nia's her the alleged princess. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Nia is hating on you and calling you names, and you have had enough of it. Correct. And not going to. Uh, I'm trying to be so careful with my words because she, even though she's legitimately cussed. Yeah, several times. <laughs> And it's not like you haven't heard me cuss, so. Right. Look. (laughs) I'm just trying to put myself in the mind of someone who, you know, cares how they come off to a child. Yeah. Um, So, Leah, here's the thing, right? I totally understand where you're coming from. Um, as a 32 year old, I will say to you that you will cackle. (laughs) God willing, the world is still spinning on its axis or whatever Mm -hmm. in a, you know, a decade or two, you are going to be screaming at 21 laughing at this hilarious and Oh, you're going to cry at 31. Like, you are going to be, like, bent over guffawing at how, you know, 
passionate <laughs> yes. and damned for real you are about every word you put into this letter. Um, crazy thing about being a kid, being this age, being in like... K through 12, especially junior high, high school and stuff like that is like, this is a real issue. (laughs) This is like an actual problem. Um, Adjusting to or becoming accustomed uh, to how socialization and like hierarchy as a teen or preteen works. And a lot of it is really bullshit because y'all are young and, you know, most of your main priorities are stuff that's relevant to an 11 year old, how you look, how many likes you have, uh, your status in school and, you know, your favorite musicians and all that stuff, which is super you know, real and relevant to you at the time. As far as Nia goes, the best advice I could give you is to keep in mind that (laughs) before you can like sneeze or snap, you're going to be grown. And this is, it, it will be real to you how relevant all of this is in your grand scheme of things, right? So for now, it's really best for you to just be, you know... To just kind of ignore it the, as best you can and look at it for what it is, which is petty and irrelevant and really not something that is going to govern the kind of life you're going to have or the success that you're going to have. And it's just kind of the beginning of people having dumb shit to say to you for no fucking reason. So, True. I mean, it just sounds to me like Nia is big mad. And all you can do. She was real pissed about move. patrol captain. Yeah, you know, she obviously couldn't handle your your beauty, your grace, your power in that moment. <laughs> and that's just something that you're gonna have to get accustomed to. It's gonna be a whole lot of that, especially especially if you plan on being, you know, successful to be someone who's happy to someone who's just honestly at peace with whoever the fuck it is. You, it doesn't even really matter who you love, who you have, what you do for a living when you're an adult or any of that stuff. If you just somebody who, you know, is happy with you and what you're doing and stuff like that, somebody is going to have a problem with that, especially someone who is incredibly miserable at it. So you kind of got to use this as the time to like adjust to that and get used to that. It's only going to get more annoying and more ridiculous as time goes on. Because unfortunately I wish I could tell you the 31 year olds, 41 year olds and and 51 year olds, like know better and do better. Mm -hmm. But if you paid any attention to this show, to this absolute shit show (laughs) that adults are running You'll know that <laughs> plenty of them stay like Nia. Yeah, like, they whole lives, before, girl. <laughs> for for just ever. So <laughs> now's the time for you to just get accustomed to that and be like, you know what? I'm above it. There's yeah. really nothing that I can do about that stuff. And I'm gonna move on and stay focused on what's important to my future at the at now, at this point, which is getting my schoolwork done if I mean, do you have schoolwork in quarantine or are they just telling you to do the grade over again? I don't even know. But whatever. You know what I'm saying? Focused on staying educated, staying healthy and all of these things. Because petty, you know, catty beef shit, unfortunately, is going to remain. It's just going to be a different person in some different circumstances. But it is hilarious to me that I heard a letter from someone about being (laughs) patrol captain and fourth grade drama. I love it. <laughs> and listen, Nia could not take her patrol captain and the power that came with it. She just could not handle the it. The fact that the diss <laughs> is pretty, Miss Pretty Princess and Leah has had enough. <laughs> is that the one who right. wrote it in, Leah? Yeah. She's just like, let me tell you, this. I'm not going to handle this bitch calling me no pretty princess not too anymore. So, like, of, all, <laughs> of the things you could be called, right? Right. I mean, so Miss Pretty Princess, if I were you, I agree with Kid Fury, Leah. Like, that was great advice. And so if she comes to you in middle school talking that pretty princess shit, I would probably be like, I am pretty. And clearly I'm a princess if you're so worried about me. Like, girl, find something else to do. Or, really, Miss Pretty Princess, you still own that? Like, 
<laughs> Damn, bitch. I mean, don't say that. But like, you ain't grew up. In, <laughs> I, can't, I forgot for a second. But like, you ain't grew up. When the last all. bell rings, <laughs> you just you still on that same week shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home and do something grown. But all right, like yeah, something something like that. But you know, Nia has whatever struggle she's dealing with that you probably don't know nothing about. So I would just not take her mess personally. And like Kip Fury said, said stay focused on your own goals and and things that you need to get done that's a solid point there are so many like bullies and shit talkers in in school when i was growing up that really like you said you don't know what the fuck they're going through or what is pushing to them pushing them to the point where they gotta fuck with antagonize or torment other students and Mm -hmm. today I don't even, I can't even imagine. Like, right. I didn't have to worry about what X, Y, and Z in, in my third period said about me on Instagram yeah, I when I was it. in, a, in, a, in I high school or middle it. school or whatever. So I don't even really fully, I can't put myself fully in the mind or experience of someone your age as far as like the school experience goes or whatever. But I do agree that yeah it's probably best to just be like you still on that shit or yes girl i am pretty and royal like what else do you have to say i know that sis like tell me something i don't know girl but you know i don't want to encourage you to to do nothing ridiculous or you know illegal but you don't have to take this girl talking to you crazy either so yeah best of luck to you in sixth grade um things (laughs) things do get better I understand too being like I took that shit in elementary school, but you got me fucked up going to middle school. <laughs> so. Right, yeah. Boy, I got it. <sighs> okay, good luck to you, sis. Our next letter comes from Jasmine, who says, Since the most recent protests and the surge in anti racist reading has circulated on social media, a lot of my non black friends have been Venmoing me with things like hope you're okay or buy yourself a meal or just straight up reparations happy juneteenth which (laughs) wow i believe in reparations 100 percent, but my dilemma comes from the fact that many of my friends and acquaintances make less than me during COVID 19 my assistant at work sent me 30 dollars on juneteenth and i felt awkward accepting it because while they're not black they are a latinx non-binary person who i know makes way less than i do do y'all think I should send the money back? I am blessed to be able to work from home and I am not hurting, but I'm an admin at a nonprofit, a teaching artist and a performer. So I'm definitely not rich to begin with. Half the time I donate what I'm sent to my local protesters bail fund, but sometimes I just buy myself a fucking candle or some lipstick. Should I feel like an asshole for buying myself things with this white guilt money? <laughs> sometimes instead of redistributing it. Thanks, Jasmine. Hmm. Yeah. That's a fascinating question. It is. I would say definitely don't give it back. <laughs> um, I would definitely not give it back. Uh, but if you feel guilty about spending it on yourself, then maybe you should give it to somebody black who you know needs it more than you do. Um, mm. But also, there's nothing wrong with black people taking some time for themselves and doing something to make them feel good, especially if you, you know, are not already <laughs> well to do. And, you know, it's a struggle for you to get things done. Like, it's nothing wrong with taking a break for for yourself or doing something nice for yourself. Yeah, I totally agree. I wouldn't give it back either. If, I, if anything, if I felt like, you know, weird about it, you know, given the situation, like you saying that, you know, this person makes less money than you or whatever, then I I would use that money and and donate it to one of the numerous places or causes um, of the moment yeah. rather than, you know, going and getting me another candle or whatever. But I also do agree that, you know, taking that white guilt money and spending it on something to ease your burden or, you know, the drama flowing through all of our minds right now. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I feel like that's the purpose and hot damn, you know, if you got white people in your life right now, the damn it. And you have a Venmo account. Shit, they should be sending you some notifications with a dollar amount account <laughs> attached to it. Why the fuck not? You know what I'm saying? If <laughs> right. I can go and get me some some Epsom salt or something to relax, 
Bitch, absolutely. But I definitely see what she's saying, and I agree that if I felt iffy about it, at least you can know that you're using that person's money for something that's like genuinely a good cause or really important, and you shouldn't really feel bad about that. If they're like super, super, super hard up on it, I don't know why they would just randomly send it to you as a way to be like, hate everything that's going on right now, girl. You know what I mean? So, you know, rather than going and buying some pretzels or whatever, girl, send that money to, you know, somebody (laughs) who really needs it right now. Yeah. And you can, it's easy to find people who need some help, especially with unemployment the way it is and the government doing less than the bare minimum to help people survive. So, Yeah, no need to spend it on yourself if you really feel guilty about it, but also no need to feel guilty and no need to send it back because it can Mm -hmm. go to somebody else in the community who could really use it. Now, if I knew that this person was like struggling on like affording food or something like that and they sent me the money, I would probably give it back to them. Well, yeah, but I, I don't know why you would be donating money to me if you don't have your own needs taken care of. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I would have yeah. to assume that even though this person makes less money than you or maybe doesn't make much, accord, uh, you know, according to you or whatever, in your opinion, um, I, I don't think that necessarily means that it's like, you know, they're giving you money that they absolutely should be keeping. They probably are sending you some money that they can afford to donate. And if you feel weird about that, you know, you can donate it as well. There's plenty of people, like Crystal said, that absolutely could use that money, whether you're donating it to the family of, you know, one of the countless names we've had to use in hashtag recently. Mm -hmm. Or like Crystal said, someone who, you know, unemployment and the current, you know, climate of everyone's economic situation with it as fucked up as it is this might be someone who's like hey girl so it's actually looking crazy over here as far as rent is concerned or food is concerned or whatever yeah. you can send it to them and i'm sure that you know everybody should feel fine so oh yes best of luck to you our last letter comes from butterfly who says i live in new york city and i have a pretty blessed living situation I'm single and I have my own bathroom and roommates that I barely interact with and I like it like that. The apartment belongs to my mother who doesn't live here anymore, so I've been paying rent for my room for about two years. My roommates are a couple in their 30s who have lived here for five years. We have a third room that is unoccupied because I cannot bear to live with more than two people. The couple is chill, clean, and we generally get along. The other day, I approached the woman about a small issue regarding our packages and noticed that she looks different. As my eyes scrolled down, I saw that she might be pregnant. (laughs) Okay. And asked her, are you? To which she confirmed. I congratulated her and we spoke briefly about her due date. She's five months along. And then we parted ways. When I was safely alone, I proceeded to flip the fuck out. I'm genuinely happy for them, but I don't want no children in my home. I know that's a terrible thing to say, but my home is my solace and I enjoy my peace, which I deserve since I pay to live here. But I know that they do, too. After I called my sister, who doesn't live here, to tell her the news, she berated me by telling me that I was being an asshole and that a newborn baby wouldn't be a big deal. She said they pay the rent on time and the baby is their business. And she also told me that I shouldn't tell my mother because it's taboo and they would eventually tell her themselves. I felt like New York sitting up against the wall in their tank top and sunglasses. Okay. I'm a chill ass earth sign. Oh Lord. And I don't need somebody coming up and condoling my space. I have enough stress as a black woman living in New York during a pandemic. (laughs) Y'all hate condola and it is crazy, but she has not done anything. Not one fucking thing. But anyway, (laughs) babies are loud and we have very thin walls babies also grow into toddlers who run around and wreak havoc on everything they see so my question is is my sister right am i being immature should i not tell my mom who is technically the landlord what would you do if you were in my shoes obviously i don't want to kick them out but i also don't want no damn babies in my house fuck them kids i have no idea what to do about this i am praying that they magically decide they need more space and leave up out of here i'm ready for y'all to get me together if i'm overreacting and any advice would be appreciated thanks butterfly so okay a couple of things first okay. of all yeah i don't know why what 
If your mom's the landlord, then ain't she gonna know they gonna have a baby anyway? Right. Like, I think eventually she will find out that they're having a baby. Yes. Like your sister said, they will so tell I don't her. know exactly what difference that makes. What's up with so many people's siblings <laughs> telling y'all some dumb shit? Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say your sister said some. That was dumb. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't really agree with her. Um I don't think that there's anything wrong with you having a problem with this. I just don't know what you're supposed to do about it. Yeah. I think that it it makes total sense that you wouldn't want to share the space with a baby there also. And I don't think it even makes sense that they would want to stay there with no motherfucking baby. Like, I don't know why you would want to raise a baby. Well, I mean, I guess maybe plenty of people do that shit. But if I was like sharing a roommate with some or sharing an apartment or whatever with someone that I wasn't even like super close with or friends with or whatever. And even if we were, if I was expecting a baby, I'd want to get the fuck out and find a place for just me and the other baby's fucking parent. So I don't think there's anything really wrong for you being like, I don't want to spend this, share this space with these two and with a baby. I also think that your sister is wilding for saying that what is she, like it's not that big a deal or it's not that yeah, bad. Or, the idea that a newborn baby wouldn't be a big deal is a lie. <laughs> excuse? Have you heard of babies? Right. That is a whole lie. <laughs> Like, okay, so that baby gonna cry at three o'clock in the morning and it's not just the people who made it that's going to be woken up. That baby is going to be throwing up on things that is not just, you know what I'm saying? Right. The, like that baby is going to do basic baby things that are going to infect, uh, <laughs> infect that are going to affect the whole household. And like, that should be considered since you didn't make this baby. <laughs> Um, so I personally feel like fuck what your sister's talking about, but at the same time, like I said, I don't know entirely what she's supposed to, what you're supposed to do, kick them out. Right. So your sister, I think is part right here, um, that you would, you know, be an asshole if you tried to like strong arm these people out of the apartment. <laughs> yeah. She's also part wrong because yeah, a newborn baby is definitely a big deal, but Oh, big deal. I mean, even if you're saying like, well, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. You actually cannot do that. You cannot put them out because they're having a baby. That's illegal. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's first and foremost, unless you want your mama to get sued, I would suggest you not. Um, and also, like a pandemic is still going on. They probably stretched financially like most people are. They got this baby coming. So they're probably not trying to put a bunch of money and effort into moving, which is highly stressful and even more so right now with the virus everywhere. So, I mean, I also would not want to live with no baby. <laughs> Truly would not want to live with no baby. And so if anything, I would be like, let me find somewhere to go. But, you know, this is your mama's house. I'm sure y'all, are, you are paying way below what market rent would be for that room. So, you know, maybe that's not a good idea for you either. In which case, you're just kind of going to have to get used to the fact that a baby is there. Because, I mean, like Kid Fury said, you can be mad or frustrated about it, but it, there's really nothing you can do. <laughs> <laughs> nothing I can think of. Other than get over it or move out. Like, those are your <laughs> options. <laughs> I mean, I can think of one thing that I probably would do, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I would be up to some That's So Raven-ass scheming, and I would do everything to try and get these niggas to want to find somebody someplace else to live. I'm talking about I would get some nigga to pretend he's in a toxic relationship with me and argue with that motherfucker in the house. Oh, you ain't shit. I would take up like a, a hobby like juggling knives. I would like unbaby proof things randomly uh, and act like uh, I didn't know. I would just do like all kinds of like ridiculous okay. things that I normally wouldn't even do, but just like just enough <laughs> to not like get the police called on me, but also enough to get them to like, you know what? We think this isn't good. We just we are really happy for, you know, the time we got to spend together, but we think it's time for us to find somewhere else to go. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Wow. Well thanks so much for the time we've got. And I hope you guys find and usher them right on out the door. 
somewhere. I would just that's let what them, I would be yeah, doing. I would let them naturally outgrow the space. But technically, you know, there's an empty bedroom. They do have the space for this baby. So, mm. <laughs> I mean, if I were you, I would just be working on getting over it because I would not be trying to move out of this sweet ass situation you have set up right now with staying at your mama's house and. Yeah, the <laughs> Kid Fury is talking about, you know, stressing these people out to the point where they want to leave. <laughs> I'm just saying making it as uncomfortable for them as possible. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I cannot co-sign that, but <laughs> I can I can suggest that you, you know, get ready. It's not like you have to commit to raising this baby with them. You could put on your right. noise canceling headphones, get you some noise canceling headphones and be prepared to shut the door and put your headphones on. You're just like, you're like a much older sibling that's not related to that baby. <laughs> so much older that you really don't even fuck with that baby like that. Or care about it. Right. So yeah. that's just none of your business. But yeah, especially in New York City, the tenants' rights, girl, you're not going to get them people out that apartment. They're not going nowhere. They're no not going way. nowhere. Sis. So, so you're going to have to figure it out on your own. <laughs> Sorry for you. Martin... Had um, oh, this, this can't not be good. <laughs> Martin had had um, some niggas moving to his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, because <laughs> he thought he was moving into a nicer one and then didn't get that apartment and they had to try to get them old niggas out the motherfucking apartment <laughs> and came up with a whole ass scheme with Pam to every motherfucking body. He had niggas coming in the house like they was gangster, all kinds of dumb shit, and eventually. That light skin couple was like, you know what? It was so great to be here and we're going to leave. <laughs> yeah. If it's not that, like Chris will say, girl, you better you, learn how to make too, formula. Yeah. You, you better get ready to shake that shit out on your inner wrist to see if it's too hot because <laughs> the baby is coming. And no matter what your sister says, they do change everything. So. Yeah. Good luck to you with whatever you decide to do. I also I forgot to do this when we started the letters, but we got two letters from um, some professionals who responded to some topics from last week. So one is from a therapist talking about the person who had their first therapy session with the woman who was like arguing with them about the protests and everything. So this therapist says, I don't know where this other therapist got her education from, but she broke all the ethics. He should absolutely not go back and should find a way to report her. A therapist should never be debating with a client. They should never discuss or oppose a person's political, moral, or religious views. In a time where we are needed to be especially empathetic and compassionate, this is a poor way of handling a client, especially a black one. In school, we are taught that you don't have to agree with a client's point of view, but you have to dig deep into a space of understanding in order to successfully treat said client i root for everybody black but she gotta go it sucks that this was his experience and i hope he finds a new therapist soon signed izzy thank you for that izzy well, i had a feeling that was what the therapists were going to say and overwhelmingly that is what y'all said and we also got a letter from dr ted <laughs> and dr ted has a letter for the person last week who wrote to us about their partner not taking a shower so, oh my God. Dr. Ted said, I'm a pediatrician in the Bay Area. Last night, I had to admit an infant girl to the hospital with a very dangerous bacterial infection of the colon, C. diff colitis. On my way home, I listened to your listener letter about their partner not showering, and I thought I would weigh in. In the hospital, we isolate patients with infectious disease based on certain levels. For the most basic levels, providers must sanitize their hands when entering and leaving the room. For infectious diarrhea, such as salmonella or E. coli, patients are isolated with contact precautions where people entering and exiting the room have to wear a gown and gloves and disinfect with hospital-grade hand sanitizer. For the absolute worst infections, such as C. diff colitis, the one that my patient had last night, patients are isolated with the contact plus precautions. Providers have to wear a gown and gloves, but instead of using hand sanitizers, they have to wash with soap and water for 30 seconds. Soap and water is the most power defen powerful defense humans have against dangerous infections. If all of these little girls take... If all of this little girl's caretakers were cleaning better with soap and water, she would not currently be admitted to the hospital. This is extra important in the time of COVID. Please share that with all the burden Ernie's and anybody else who needs to hear the message. Thanks, Dr. Todd Oath Pediatrics. The fact that a whole ass doctor had to write in and say, please tell 
these niggas. I would like to emphasize that this doctor is a pediatrician. <laughs> a pediatrician had to respond and say, get your man. Like, this little girl would not be in the hospital right now if the people around her did a better job of using soap and water. Bacteria is not a game. Viruses are not a game. And you can get rid of them hoes in less than a minute with soap and water. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's almost magical. So please use that shit. And your partner not taking a shower is not just, it's not quirky. It's not, you know, inconsequential. It, it's not hipster. It, it can cause real problems. Real people can be hospitalized behind these infections. So please. It's not just, and it's not just gross. It can cause actual <laughs> yes. health problems. <laughs> but let's also just you turn around back to it being fucking gross. And the fact that you smell. <laughs> Because that is still real. So please. And you're an adult. Please wash your ass. Dr. Ted said so. And that wraps up the letters for this week. Send yours to asktheread at gmail.com and we will be right back. Hey, y'all, this episode is being brought to you guys by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Break up the routine of a day spent indoors by exploring class topics that include creative writing, graphic design, freelance, and entrepreneurship, and more. Even you celebrities getting in all kinds of trouble doing nothing. Get on over there to Skillshare. (laughs) It offers creative classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. A creative challenge or productivity class may help in setting small goals and feeling a fulfilling sense of accomplishment. It's a strong community. It's essential in times of hardship. Tap into the support of fellow creatives who provide encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Find yourself moving the furniture. Move with purpose and get inspired with interior design classes plus creative projects are a meaningful way to say what you're feeling to those you can't see in person. They've got all sorts of classes of all kinds and different things that you can learn, Mm -hmm. coding, photography, all sorts of fun stuff that you can brush up on. And whenever you're allowed to go back in the world and be fancy, you'll have a new skill at your side. Yes, and it helps with being able to explore your creative side and doing something useful with yourself during a time where a lot of us may find ourselves with some free time that we desperately need to fill with, you know, something good for us. You can explore that creativity and get two free months of premium membership at Skillshare.com slash three. That is two whole months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. So get started. Join today by heading to Skillshare.com slash the R-E-A-D. Two free months. Skillshare.com slash three. Let them know we sent you. Let's move on. This episode is also being brought to you guys by Barefoot Hard Seltzer. It's a vibrant and refreshing hard seltzer made from three key ingredients. Sparkling water, a hint of natural flavors, and real wine made by Barefoot, America's most awarded wine brand. Each can is 70 calories and 4% alcohol. The perfect amount to kick back with a sunny summer day or a sunny summer evening (laughs) or a moony summer night so as the weather is heating up look for bar barefoot hard seltzer and four delicious flavor they've got peach and nectarine pineapple and passion fruit which is my go-to strawberry and guava along with cherry and cranberry you can find it at your local retailer or you can get it delivered to your door by visiting drizzly.com search barefoot hard seltzer and use the promo code barefoot hard seltzer as all one word at checkout for five dollars off of your first order and that's at d-r-i-z-l-y.com with the coupon code barefoot hard seltzer all one word barefoot hard seltzer is your summer dream in a can go and get a little drink in your life and let's finish up the show all right so it is time for the read now that we are back it is I have not much. I saw a tweet that uh, T.S. Madison posted on Instagram maybe yesterday or so from a white alleged reporter who I'm not going to name because I'm sure that this motherfucker would love that. Um, But they tweeted, I'm sorry, Blacks, you already have a month. Juneteenth isn't a thing. 
Don't colonize our month as well. Thanks. Signed, the gays. And so, to this grown-ass white Mm. gay adult male. I saw that bullshit. I'm... I'm lost at how someone could be this uneducated and this loud and confident Mm. at the same time. And I know that motherfuckers like this are usually just trolling. You feel inadequate. You feel small. You are clearly as dumb as you probably also feel. And so the way for you to feel sufficient or adequate with yourself is to try and say whatever will get you some attention from people who are already, you know, exhausted and energized and, you know, getting a specific kind of work done. Juneteenth. Hmm, tell him. Predates Pride Month by like a hundred years. At least. <laughs> like, surely way more. But for you to fix your fingertips to say to blacks that we already have a month, the shortest fucking month of the year mind you that somehow this first of all black people can't colonize anything especially not as far as things go over here good point (laughs) secondly once again juneteenth has always been in fucking june long before (laughs) you know what i'm saying (laughs) Long before oh, Stonewall, so stupid. <laughs> yes. or before you got to wear your harness down at the motherfucking music fest. Oh, so shit. I don't understand how, again, you can have this much confidence within something you have zero understanding uh, about. That's it. That's it. Also, it is. So frustrating, once again, to be a black gay person who has to sit here and look at another white gay person and say, and say here I am, right here being gay and black as well. <laughs> like, yep. Right here, doing the same black ass shit, <laughs> recognizing the same black ass shit and the same black ass days that my gay black ass has always. And yet, mm. you signing... This bullshit ass tweet with some the gays while directing hate and fuckery towards black people as if black gay people aren't doing both of these things, trying to celebrate our pride while also, you know, advancing, um, you know, the black existence and movement and fighting for black lives and preservation. And who the fuck do you think that you are talking about some sign the gays? Elton John? Bitch, don't nobody even know who the fuck you are? And she couldn't even come out here talking about some bullshit like this. What the fuck is your goddamn problem? Right. I, again, a lot of this is, again, just bullshit that white people like this are kicking out to try and like further exhaust us and tire us out. They see us making headway. They see us making moves. They see more of their own sons and daughters and brothers and sisters out here in the fucking, you know, the fight with us and shit like that. And motherfuckers know that we still have a lot more work to do. Brown of Taylor's fucking killers are still out here hanging out, having a great goddamn time. Just shopping and everything. Meanwhile, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers is like J. Cole out here talking to motherfuckers to black men about how they come off. So, like, nobody has the time for this bullshit. And I feel like, again, there are white people out here who are just trying to, like, nip at our fucking heels and knees and just trip us up as we attempt to continue to move forward and do more work and keep our feet on the right necks and all that other shit. And it's like, girl, if you don't have anything sensible to say, not even nice, not even kind, 
Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't have yes. anything legitimate to fucking say, then shut the fuck up. Get your kicks on some other route, bitch. Like, what do you what? <laughs> what do you need? What do you need? You that mad that you can't go down to the gay bar this motherfucking June that you got to be pissed off that Beyonce had the motherfucking nerve to release a song on Juneteenth and once again acknowledge that she black that the motherfucking that people like Lizzo or 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 Megan Thee Stallion out here talking about some all Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter mm-hmm. and the fuck that is not going to stop you from being as gay. And as mute as you have ever been in any June that you have celebrated your gayness, you can continue to do that without coming on the Internet and saying some fucking intolerant bullshit that don't even make no motherfucking sense. You're wasting literally everybody's motherfucking time. Not to mention that it is brown skinned queer people that gave you the opportunity, the time, the space to even go and get fucked up on your Molly at anybody's goddamn pride parade. You wouldn't even have pride if it wasn't for black (laughs) queer people. So what the fuck is this? (laughs) Like many of the same people that are standing within that intersection of blackness and gayness or or queerness or whatever are the fucking reason that you even have the opportunity to wear your fucking American Eagle Pride Edition hat or whatever and go down to the parties and the parades and get your life in and pass out or right. whatever. And that's fine. That's your fucking right to do that. But it's our people that busted our motherfucking ass that got arrested that got killed that got beat up so that you could do that motherfucking shit and you have continuously been ungrateful about that shit but you're not gonna come out here and talk about some juneteenth is not a motherfucking thing when it was a thing ages ages and ages before you could go and see sam smith before i'm at a fucking park somewhere i'm just tired (laughs) because then on the other side of things you got straight niggas mad at us for saying black trans lives matter yep. or all black lives matter and, and feeling like we're muddying the waters of of, of black purpose oh, yeah, or whatever by division. saying these things too. I saw someone post some shit, some hotepery that says something about... Um, like we don't need to say black trans lives matter or all black lives matter because we're included in black lives matter, obviously. (sighs) And when we fight for gay rights, how does that help black people or blankety blank, blank, blank. And it's like, bitch, I have been to more protests for black lives than I have for gay rights. I have been more present mm. in the talk or the discussion for what's going on in the black existence than any of the fuck thing else. And I also do the same thing for gayness, for queer people, because that also applies to me. And it's what's right. So, like, I have to look this way and hear some bullshit from my people. And I got to look this way and hear some bullshit from my people. And meanwhile, I feel like many black queer people, black gay people, black lesbians, black trans people or whatever. I got to look forward <laughs> like like on Smart Guy when TJ, when somebody would say some dumb shit and TJ would look at the camera with that face like, did you just hear this dumb bitch? <laughs> like, I feel like that's what it's like to be black gay and sit in betwixt yeah. both of these fuck ass arguments and i'm so tired of it and i understand like i'm not gonna excuse any of it like for black people i feel like there's such a lack of education or care when it comes to what we got to go through and what we deal with or whatever i also deal understand that like oppression is a motherfucker and i feel like a lot of oppressed people find strength and like keeping other ne- others beneath them. Yes. You know what I mean? So like I can sort of disagree but at least surmise how some black people arrive at the bullshit that they arrive at when it comes to, you know, what black gay people are talking about when we talk about things. You know what I mean? But bullshit like this from white gay people Mm-mm. like honey 
just because a couple of your daddies and uncles and mamas or whatever people in your town or whatnot, just because you have dealt with uh, homophobia doesn't mean you get to look up or down your motherfucking nose at anybody the fuck else's struggle, especially not the black one. So save it, suck it up, do your, you know, your your Zoom brunches or whatever the fuck <laughs> it is that you was planning for your social distancing distancing pride month and shut the fuck up about anything the fuck black if you don't have anything positive to say yes. anything productive the fuck to say at least if you're gonna be racist motherfucker but you can't even be racist with sentence because racism doesn't even make no exactly. goddamn sense but honey you damn should not go say well juneteenth isn't the thing huh what <laughs> what that is like what you juneteenth really it. that's just a historical event it just is <laughs> How can you spend any time or bandwidth on Kavya James Union Wade's internet and say some shit that could easily be researched and show you is true, is real, and what you're talking about don't make no motherfucking sense? I just, I don't understand. And black folk who always have something to say about gay people standing up for ourselves, marching, you know, alongside all of these other marches that's going on and specifying the issues that black trans women face, that queer people face, whatever the fuck. I want y'all to know this is what the fuck we dealing with on this side too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we really be standing in this intersection by our motherfucking selves because this is the bullshit that we deal with from the white gay people that y'all can't stand a motherfucking like stand at all. Right. And be either lumping us in with them or forgetting that we exist. Because I know a lot of the like disgust and ire or whatever the fuck that black folk be directing towards the alphabet community or whatever is because of bullshit like this or just your overall in general homophobia. So, yeah. honey, before you try to fix your characters to talk <laughs> about whatever the fuck, I'm doing or saying or us fighting for, you know, because again, much like white people who be talking about all lives matter and how we don't need to say black lives matter because blah, 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 blah. That's exactly what the fuck you're doing. Yep. too. Yes. Black lives matter. And we we can talk from A to Z until our feet face turn blue about all of the different ways that that is real. Right. But there is a specific <laughs> issue Mm -hmm. that is plaguing the black trans experience that has to be like isolated in its discussion it's not as simple as oh well we could say black lives matter so that that counts for you too no the fuck it doesn't because i'll be the same ones who say well i don't agree with your lifestyle but i guess you can you can come in march right no no girl no because that's a part of the problem that i don't agree with your lifestyle shit and whatever the fuck is another part is on the list of all of the issues yes. on, that are right there alongside black trans women consistently losing their lives in their in, in our communities and shit like that. So I don't want to hear that shit from us. And I damn sure, damn sure, damn sure don't want to hear that shit from Matt or Mark or none of the white gays down at the motherfucking cafeteria. Everybody calm the fuck mm, down. Yes. And that's it. Oh, that's so real. Because the niggas were talking about, well, you know, black trans people and black women and queer people, that's all included in Black Lives Matter. They are never the same niggas who are actually talking about the things that happen to black, queer and trans people. Y'all are never actually talking about Tony McDade or any of the black trans people who are found murdered every damn week. Y'all not the ones talking about the violence that black women specifically face from black men. Y'all not the ones checking and your friends in in public y'all the ones coming for no name on the track but anyway anyway exactly it's like why then don't i ever see y'all right. posting anything about these trans women when they're murdered right because it's like three a week right so why isn't she, why why is it that y'all never got nothing to say about that yes. we trying to beg people to to continue to mention brianna taylor so it's much beg. like 
Much like when gay, lesbian, bi, queer, trans, black people are talking about the specifics of our issues or when black women are talking about the specifics of, you know, a black woman's issues and not just the overall black experience, that is worth hearing out. It's worth stating. It's not just something that can be lumped in to the rest of the Black Lives Matter discussion because a lot of y'all don't say shit about that. Right. A lot of y'all don't have anything to say. A lot of y'all don't have no fight left when it comes to getting around to those people that also need to be fought for, also need help or assistance or support or whatever the fuck. So yeah, we got to get specific and we got to talk about those people as well. If you got a problem with it, you can be just as quiet as this motherfucking cracker should have been before he decided to tweet this bullshit. But you don't. And we got to sit here and talk about this dumb shit any motherfucking way. And I'm tired of it. But I'm especially tired, especially tired of all you gay honkies that are always saying this dumb shit. And then I got to get my black gay ass lumped in to your fuckery when I don't even fucking agree with it. I'm tired. Shut up. Okay. Suck a dick, save a life and leave it at that. (sighs) <sighs> oh, well, let me not say that. That's homophobic now, a white, according to a white guy. You know, you can't I saw say that suck too. A dick. I saw that too. And I'm like, sir, first of all, it's not just the gays that suck dick. I understand the gays suck dick, but everybody who fucks people with dick sucks dick. So, And it's also not a term that's expensive. That's it, right. solely used towards gay people. <laughs> Women tell each other, suck my dick. Yes. I mean, like, so that's just a reach. Like, y'all just want to be mad. <laughs> but we did that. Like, we covered that white bullshit. So, oh, true. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't really have a read this week. I just actually want to say thank you, Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> wow. I want to say thank you because, first of all, Niggas in Oklahoma already know we have a totally different culture than them white folks. We are not them. They do some different shit and we just, you know, try to stay alive. So Mm. anytime I'm talking shit about Oklahoma, y'all already know I'm not talking about the black or the indigenous or the Latino populations in Oklahoma. But anyway, I just have to say, I definitely thought Trump's little white power presentation was going to go a lot worse and the white people did put some some premium white dumbassery on the national stage they did do that some very dumb things were said in interviews with cable news outlets but thanks to the young people and the k-pop stands the trump administration completely embarrassed itself what these niggas never should have done was bragged about the number of ticket requests they received talking about a million fucking tickets and we gonna need overflow space and all that because like girl right. <laughs> yeah i don't know what made y'all think it would be a good idea to advertise that or brag about it but you got your feelings hurt you got your faces cracked i truly love it it was i think just under 6200 people that actually showed up for that fucking rally in a in a venue that holds 19,000. like Literally every other show that comes through Tulsa outsold this shit. So (sighs) thank you, Tulsa. I heard the counter protests uh, that happened to celebrate Juneteenth and celebrate black people had way more people at it. Um, You know, I just wish more of you niggas was wearing masks, but I have to give my city credit where it's due. That could have gone a lot worse. And y'all said something like. He said something like people are wearing masks just to show like they don't like him or something. Or yeah, like- he, he truly thinks the whole thing is political and he didn't want to see any people with masks at the thing. Like nobody who was going to be in camera shot behind him could wear a mask. He's just... I'm like, that is just, Girl, you know, that that is it's just so a foolish. strong <laughs> reminder of how much of a failure you are and how right. much you failed at this. And but you're okay. just a whole dumbass, sir. So I just wanted to say thank you to Tulsa uh, for doing what you did. Um, you sent a message to that dumbass bitch that he's going to have to work a little bit harder than he thought. And uh, I appreciate it. Other than that, this week has absolutely drained the fuck out of me. Sometimes I really just wonder how I am continuing because every day feels, you know, fucking unreal. But I take my joy where I can get it. And I got a lot of joy in watching Trump uh, be fucking embarrassed. I got a lot of joy out of him getting off of the plane when he got back to D.C. with his tie undone, looking drunk. 
like he had done some lines and shit on the flight back because he just was so sick over how didn't nobody in Oklahoma showed up. And he bragged about it too, talking about we ain't never had an empty seat and we won't have none in Oklahoma. Yes, you did, bitch. You had thousands and thousands of them in Oklahoma. So figure out something else. This one ain't working. And that's it. Yeah, it's always fun to see him embarrassed, especially because he's such a fucking narcissist. Right. So, and like the inflation of his ego goes to like the most absurd places. Right. So any opportunity or chance that you get to see his ego just get demolished. Yes. Is, it's what I need. <laughs> it's just like super saturated joy. I can't even. So yes, shout out to Tulsa and to K-pop for saying fuck them. <laughs> And I'm honestly not shocked because them BTS stands are unlike anybody else. The barbs could take notes, truly, because them hoes do not fucking play. I swear they got eight there's, trillion different fan cams just lined up and ready to go. They don't hesitate. There's they're standing and then there's K-pop standing. And like th- that shit is a, it's a bit different. Like yeah. They were are like the type that will literally take over your FaceTime or something and and come live to you through the hacking of your devices. Yes, hacking your Zoom. And cuss you out. They will make your phone play their favorite Blackpink song. <laughs> so, oh, you know. yes. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Don't forget to check us out on social media at This Is The Read. Our website is thisistheread.com. Merch available at shoptheread.com. And don't forget to save a lot on your closet this season with Thread Up. They're the largest online thrift store with up to 90% off your favorite brands. So get an extra 30% off your first order when you go to threadup.com slash read that's t-h-r-e-d-u-p dot com slash r-e-a-d for 30 percent off your first order today terms do apply and let's see anything else from you kifuri before we go um yes um be safe be uh as healthy as you can possibly be don't put too much pressure on yourself this coming week and um, try to get your smiles in where you can. Don't feel shit if they are uh, scarce because that's just the time we're living in, sis. Yeah. But um, keep it together and hopefully we'll see you next week with some more fuck rate because I'm sure there'll be plenty of it. It's just <laughs> what we choose to discuss. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thanks for sticking around. My interview with Kaya Wright is coming up next. And thanks to the folks at Royal Oils for partnering with us on this interview. And that's it for us. We will see y'all next week. Hey, y'all, I know that during the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us are, you know, trying to do our part. We're social distancing. We're staying at home. But that means that it can be tough to keep your hair looking good and fresh because you can't go to the salon. So that is why we have invited on Kaya Wright, who is an Emmy winning celebrity stylist for Jennifer Hudson, Sierra and many, many more big names. Kaya, thank you so much for being here. Look at you, girl. Yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> How often do you shampoo your hair? It's hard to say. Usually uh, between one and two weeks. One like and two a, weeks. Yeah, a big deep shampoo. I will co-wash it more frequently than that. Maybe, yeah, more frequently than that. But a whole big deep shampoo, deep conditioner, all my other little treatments and stuff that I like to throw in there, that is not as frequently. But I need all of it anyway. Although if you have suggestions, I want to hear them because... Listen, yeah. being stuck in the house like this has made me realize that I do not know how to do a lot of things. So <laughs> how should we be taking care of our natural hair? Maybe for people who have protective style, stuff like that. What should we be doing with our hair in particular? Well, if I could just go through just probably like a quick, like, I like to call it a system because, you know, and, and these are easy ways that you can just throw it into your regimen. Let's say you are where you are. You haven't really cared for your scalp, like you said, in a while. But sometimes yeah. you might get, it's like a hair spa. Let's call it hair spa day. Okay, I'm like, the spa. <laughs> yes. No, you're not on the, you're not doing any web calls, webcam, anything. Mm-hmm. This one is a great product right here. It's a water-activated scalp scrub. 
great thing about all of their products is it all has like coconut oils in them. So they hydrate and moisturize that hair. That's the number one. That's really what I care about the most. Let's really hydrate and give that hair some oil, some food. It's hungry, mm-hmm. it's thirsty, and our scalp just needs to be cleansed off. So it's just like the skin. This is a scalp screw. You put this on your scalp all the way through and just take probably about one inch sections and just go through it and just scrub this around your scalp. Mm-hmm. It's water. Then you can move right into your shampoo. Get on and- out. And then you can go into your conditioner. Mm-hmm. Let's say you want to sit under. I think this is spot scalp day. Spot scalp day, you move into your mask. This yes. product is probably one of my favorites because my hair, I don't know if it's a lot of women going through thyroid issues. They're going through issues with like hair loss, thinning, all type of stuff. I like this product because it's so hydrating. I can pull. I like when I, my fingers can get through my hair. That's mm-hmm. like a good, like it's it's so porous because of my hair loss and whatever it's going through. But I need something with a lot of slippage. Yeah. So this one is really great. Nice big scoop. Put on a cap. Sit there while you're at work and just let your hair treat all day. It's mm. not... No timer at all. Just endless time. <laughs> Eight hours, you know girl. <laughs> you know, all day long. If, you want to, if you really want to take it up a level, you can mix it with your scalp elixir. Sometimes I'll put the scalp elixir on first. Oh. Then ask two great products that work really well together. Especially like I have a few clients with scalp issues and I use this on them and I put them under the steamer with this. So you got the steamer. Oh, that's genius. <laughs> you can do your mask on your face. You can do this mask in your head. Put the scalp elixir first after you shampoo. Then top it off with your mask. Put on your plastic cap. Or you can go on the steamer and you're good. Wow. You know? <laughs> hey, the fact that I didn't even fine. think to combine those products, but man. Yeah, really, I mean, I had to because I had clients with scalp issues. And I was like, you know, you know what? Let me try the scalp elixir with the mask so I can get a two for one. You know, right. so it's it's been good. So you're already at like one, two, uh, three, <laughs> four, <laughs> and you got five. You're already at five, six products, and mm-hmm. you're, you're you're like totally taken care of on as far as scalp care is concerned. I mean, yeah. if you want health care. I think right now during COVID, this is the perfect time to just really just take care of your hair. Even if you got to throw on a wig, you can pull your hair in a low ponytail and pop a wig on. Nobody will see the back. Ain't nobody going to see the back. Don't nobody nobody know it's lifting in the back. You know what I mean? (laughs) Pop the real good, girl. (laughs) Just put the face light in the front. (laughs) They do not have to. Nobody said you was doing a high pony in that wig. Nobody said that. They don't have to see the back. Exactly. Like, I, I, I took me today. I had put my hand up. I was like, dang, I want to put the wig on, but I'm not. I took this little braid, uh, synthetic braid, and mm-hmm. I wrapped it like a crown in the back and said, okay. See, I, I love I, that. There's just so many little quick things we can do to where you think we actually put a style together. And it's like, girl, this took me eight minutes from start to finish. So, exactly. My little makeup took longer to put on. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I've heard this before and I wanted to ask your opinion on it, that using products within the same line makes them work better than they would individually because they all feed off of one another. Is that true? Has that been your experience? Is this something where we need to look at getting the whole line so that every product works better? I think for sure, you know, and we don't get a lot of products that work like that uh, together because... They don't have a lot of products that have a whole system. Most people focus on style. Not a lot of brands focus on systems. Mm, They don't. Definitely not mass brands. So um, that definitely is Mm. for sure. Like with this brand, we really recommend three weeks. Just stay with it three weeks so you can really see like, okay, one shampoo, you know. Two shampoos, okay, cool. But let me try the whole thing three times 
to a month and just really see how it works, you know? And a lot of us are probably dealing with hair that's dry and brittle right now because we're not seeing a regular stylist and that sort me. of thing. So it's all, listen, me too. When I find that little one dry patch in the middle of my head, I'm like, oh Lord, here we go. Let me, <laughs> let me focus on what's going on. So we might think, oh, let me dump, you know, whatever leave-ins or whatever in it. But we really need to focus on the scalp and then go out from there. Treat the scalp, make sure it's getting what it's need because you can put all sorts of stuff on your hair itself. If your scalp is still dry, you're going to come right back to the same problems. And the key to, and the key to it, one of the things I noticed that I was going through, like my little hair loss phase, is blood flow. If your scalp is not getting the proper blood flow, and I learned that because I had to go to like a hair loss uh, center in my Salon Republic, and they, I got the little stimulating cap. I don't know if you knew about that capitalist cap is in the back of those airplane magazines. And now, oh, they, have yeah. night, and now they have late night infomercials. Um, <laughs> I'm like, did y'all know that I had this cap at home? And that, that I <laughs> doubled the price that you guys are charging right now? Wow. But I've been using that for a year. And I'm going to tell you, it literally changed the texture of my hair because of the blood flow. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Like my texture got softer, curlier because the blood flow is now going to my scalp. They also gave me a little micro needling, um, little roller. Mm-hmm. So that oh, I've seen those. Out. Yeah. But then you, now you're talking about putting that scalp scrub on there and stimulating. Mm-hmm. Now stimulating about, it. Now everything's going to work together. Got you. It makes sense to me. Well, it's all about a regimen. If you want to grow healthy hair, you know you have to start with a healthy scalp. The Royal Oils Collection by Head & Shoulders works to promote a healthier scalp and healthier hair in just three weeks. So whether you're doing a protective style or you're wearing your hair out, you can protect your scalp. Give it what it needs. Seal in the moisture with the Royal Oils Collection. And all the products are available at Walmart stores and walmart.com. Kaya Wright, thank you so much for joining me today. This was such a pleasure. (laughs) Thank you so much. Good to talk to you as well. I appreciate it. Stay sanitized and get your scalp together. (laughs) (laughs) And check me out. Follow me at KayaWright.com and KayaWright1 on Instagram. Uh, Subscribe to my YouTube page. I love that because there's tons of advice and tips and tricks and just behind the scenes with Kaya. Um, Or you can follow Muse Hair, which is extensions and wigs and all of those great things too. Thank you. Be well. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 